Hi there everybody. In this video we're looking at the immune response and in particular the B lymphocytes or the B cells. Um, so these are cells that are produced and also mature in the bone marrow and then once they've matured they leave the bone marrow and they spread around the body particularly in the lymph nodes and in the spleen. So the purpose of B cells is twofold. So here is a B cell, so this is a B cell that has matured and once that B cell has matured, it could either um, become a plasma cell and plasma cells release antibodies or it could produce, uh, it could become a memory cell and memory cells stay in the body for a long time and help with our long term immunity. So that's the two things that B cells could do. They can it become cells that produce antibodies or they can become memory cells. So in terms of how those cells are produced, there are three stages. So just as an overview, um, first of all, we have something called clonal selection. So that's the selection of a particular B cell. Then that cell that's been selected undergoes mitosis. So we call this clonal expansion or proliferation, which basically means that the cell that was selected here um, multiplies many times by mitosis. So you end up with a very large number of identical clones of that B lymphocyte. And then out of that big mass of identical cells, we get differentiation. So this is where some of them will become plasma cells and some of them will become memory cells. Uh, the cells that become plasma cells, once they're plasma cells, they will stay as plasma cells, um, but they are relatively short lived. Um, the memory cells, however, as we've said, they can stay in the body for uh, up to years sometimes. Um, but they can then themselves undergo clonal selection, in which case they will then um, form mitosis, so we get more of them, and again they can then differentiate. Okay, so let's look at clonal selection first of all. If we look at three different B lymphocytes, and I'm just drawing one of the antibodies um, on there just to make it easier, well, you can see that each of these antibodies has a slightly different shape. Um, um, the reason we have B cells with different shaped antibodies is because uh, during the, the maturation phase, so as the B cells are maturing, um, there are changes to the genes that code for those antibodies, which results in had them having slightly different shapes. So we basically end up with um, different types of antibodies or, or um, receptors on our B cells in our body at all times. What we've got here is a pathogen. So let's say this is a bacterial cell. And on the outside of the bacterial cell, there are antigens. Again, these are just markers. Um, this is a way for our immune system to recognize that the pathogen does not belong to us. It's foreign, or we say it is non-self. And antigens bind to antibodies. They can either bind to antibodies as they're still part of the B cell, or they can bind to antibodies which have been released by plasma cells and are free in the blood or lymph. And the important thing is that the, uh, in order to bind, the antigen and the antibody have to be complementary shapes. So you can see here that this B cell in the middle is the, has the correct shape antibody or receptor to bind to the antigen or the pathogen, whereas these two do not. So this B cell has now been selected. It's, it's kind of, if you like, it's been activated by the process of binding to an antigen. So the cell that has just bound to the antigen has been selected and now it divides by mitosis. So we will get over time many, many, many copies. And of course, because it's mitosis, all of these cells that are produced are identical to the original cell. And therefore, they have antibodies that also match the antigens on this pathogen, which is the one that originally bound to our B cell and caused this whole process to take place. So remember, the whole point of this is that we've got a pathogen in the body, which the B cell has recognized and attached to, and our body wants to destroy that pathogen. 
So the more cells we have that recognize the pathogen, because of course there's not just one of them in the body. If there's one pathogen in the body, there are going to be thousands or millions of them. The more of our cells that we've got that can recognize it, the more quickly we will be able to destroy it. So the next stage is differentiation. So we've got um, our cells, which are now identical to one another, and some of them will then, as they uh, divide, they will become memory cells. And as we said before, some of them will differentiate, which means that they change slightly and they become plasma cells. And those plasma cells can release antibodies. Um, thousands and thousands of antibodies can be produced and released every second. And as we said before, these plasma cells don't last very long. So they are there um, when the, like the number of pathogens in the body is kind of at its highest in order to try and destroy them. But then after a few weeks, the number of plasma cells in the body and therefore the number of antibodies will decrease. Just want to very briefly talk about the interaction between T cells or T lymphocytes and B cells. So T lymphocytes will be covered in another video. Um, but basically, helper T cells, once they bind to an antigen presenting cell, are able to stimulate B cells. So this antigen presenting cell here, um, it's either a pathogen itself with antigens on the outside, or it could be a host cell, which has, for example, a macrophage um, or a neutrophil, which has engulfed a pathogen and it now is presenting antigens from that pathogen on its cell surface membrane. So this helper T cell has got um, receptors. They are not antibodies, but it has receptors uh, which are the right shape to bind to the antigen presenting cell. When that happens, the helper T cell is activated and it's stimulated to release cytokines, which is a chemical. And those cytokines then stimulate the B cell. And can help the B cell to uh, start to undergo the process of proliferation or mitosis and differentiation. So the memory B cells and the plasma cells can be produced more quickly. So for this to happen, the B cell will usually also have to have met the same antigen as our helper T cell did here. It gets a little bit complicated, but the basic point is that helper T cells release cytokines, which can stimulate B cells to um, divide and to differentiate. Okay, that's all. Thank you.